Welcome back to Level Up PowerPoint. We've got a lot of questions about this intro. That's why in this video, I'm going to show you step by step how it was created. I'll use Morph to animate the shapes and make an image or a text smoothly appear from behind the thin bar. First, we have to draw a rectangle selected from the gallery, hold shift and click and drag to draw a shape. Next, go to the Format tab and adjust the height to 0.2 inches. If you're using centimeters, you can type 0.5, but also remember, you can just type 0.2 and an inch sign and then hit Enter. PowerPoint will automatically convert it for you. Now let's move it outside somewhere here. And then I want to create another rectangle, which bottom border will be perfectly aligned to the top border of a yellow box. How to do it? I will first create a copy of a yellow box, hold Ctrl and Shift, click and drag, then drag the bottom right corner of that rectangle to the top. So then we flipping it using the top border of the yellow shape to become a bottom border of a new one. Next, I will create a text box where you could put a name or a title for the video. Type the text in, make sure it's center aligned, and then center align it with this box. All elements are ready. Now we have to make sure they're in correct order and later on change the color. I will open selection pane to see all our objects. I will name them so it'll be easier for us to order them. This one I will call name this cover top and the last one will be the yellow shape i want to make sure they're in correct order i will move the name to the bottom of the list and yellow shape to the top last step select this big rectangle and we want to make sure the fill color matches the color of the background i will use eyedropper to select the background color now select the slide on the left panel and duplicate it you can also use a shortcut Control D. On the new slide, select the yellow box and big rectangle, then go to Arrange, Align, and Right Align Shapes. That's the movement that our yellow shape will make. Last thing, we have to add Morph. Let's go to Transitions tab, click on Morph, and then adjust the duration to 0.75. I will come back to it at the end when we will see if it's too fast or too slow for us. Two slides are ready. Now let's create another one. Duplicate the slide, select the yellow shape, and let's zoom in. Then stretch the left edge to match the width of the rectangle above. That's all we have to do on this slide. Let's duplicate the slide. This time, we want the name to move down from behind the yellow bar. Select the text box and move it down. Make sure to hold Shift key to maintain the vertical position. The movement on this slide is ready. Now we have to create objects that will morph to the next slide, where we will reveal the image. Let's use the shapes that we have on the slide. Select the top rectangle, hold Shift and Control, and click and drag to create a copy. I'll try to align this shape with the top of the yellow bar. Now stretch the new shape to reach the bottom of the slide. Just for now, I will change the color for it so it'll be easier for us to see it, but it's already correct color as it matches the background, so you can skip this step. Now right-click on the new shape and send it to back. Now paste your image. I will use this as an example. Select the new shape in the picture, go to the Home tab, Arrange, Align, and select Align Center. I will also move a picture a little bit lower, so then when yellow bar will move down, you will see the picture moving up a little bit. It adds this nice small effect. Great! Then right-click on the picture and send to back, just to be sure that the blue box will cover the picture perfectly, I will stretch it a little bit outside of the slide. As you know, Morph sometimes plays tricks on us and it just morphs wrong shapes into the wrong spot. And that's why I will use animation to appear objects that I want to introduce on the slide and to disappear objects that I will no longer need on the following slides. 
first select that top rectangle that I no longer need because the text that was underneath is already visible. Go to Animations tab, More, and Disappear. Now I will select the image and the blue rectangle and apply Animation Appear. Let's open Animation Pane, select All Animations, right-click and pick Start with Previous. So those animations will start automatically right after the morph. The last thing I have to do is to change the color of this rectangle to match the background, so it looks like it's invisible. Select the slide on the left and duplicate it. Here we have to delete the top rectangle that already disappeared on the previous slide and remove the remaining animations. Now select the yellow bar, name box and this big rectangle, hold shift and move all of them down. Then select an image, again hold shift and move it up so it's fully visible. That's all! Let's take a look on our animation. I do have to click to go to the next slide and the movement seems a little bit slow, so we have to fix this. But overall, the morph works well. Now that you know the technique of how to move things around, make them appear and smoothly move from behind the bar, you can finish the animation however you want. Let me show you one way how you could end this animation. First, I'll duplicate the slide, then delete the text box and hide an image a little bit, then select yellow shape and a big rectangle, move it up so it covers an image completely. On the next slide, I will select the yellow bar, go to the Format tab and change the width to 0.2, so it will become a square again. I will duplicate this again, and on the last slide, I will select the square and move it up outside of the slide area. Now it's time to adjust the transitions to make the movement faster and to make sure that slides will play automatically. I'll start with the last one, go to Transitions tab, change Duration to 0.25. Now select the first slide, hold Shift and click on the fourth slide then hold Ctrl and click on those two slides. In the Transitions tab, check the box to Advanced Slide After and change the duration to 0.4. I left this slide because I want the duration of it to be slightly longer, so I will leave it at 0.75 and I want it to give the audience more time to see an image, that's why let's say 3 seconds should be enough in the after box. On the slide where we present the name for the first time, I will also adjust the after time to 1 second to make sure that the viewer will have time to read it. Now let's quickly review all the timing slide by slide. I will also leave that information in the description below. If you would want to animate it a little bit faster or slower, simply adjust the duration of the transition. And the animation is ready! Let's check the final results! Looks great! Thanks for watching! Let us know in the comments what would you like to see next! If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe!